Veronica, how are you doing? Hey, hi. I'm doing wonderful. Thank you. Sure. Everybody, this is our, my first time to have a session with Veronica Drake. So I want to start out before we talk to Eric. Hi, Eric. I love you. I want to start out by uh, uh, having you tell people a little, a, little about, a little bit about yourself and how they can get in touch with you. Sure. Um, Veronica Drake is my name and my website, so it's very simple. And I communicate with angels. I use intuition, and I'm able to contact and communicate with your deceased loved ones with heart and soul. I really feel what I do, so, so it's I'm like, very blessed. Is it like, a, are you saying you're clairsentient, or you, you just feel like it's a passion for you? Oh, oh both. I feel I feel things. I hear things. I smell things. I teach things, um, and I'm always open to learning. So I always learn from the people that I connect with. So. Well, how, just tell us about your story. Did you have these since birth, or or were were you uh, hit in the head by a rock after you fell off a horse? Guys, I just told her about my horse story, so that's why I'm saying that. But no, yeah. actually, I went to take my life. I was done. Wow. I didn't want to be here. Okay. Didn't want to be here anymore. I had done some been things. Been there, that, done that, been there. That I thought weren't worthy of being alive mm -hmm. and was going to careen my car, was flooring it, and I literally felt the presence of the angels come in, wrap me, feel their warmth, warm breath, and say to me, We got this. What are you doing? Oh. Oh, and November it was November 1996, and I've been hearing, seeing, and translating off and on since then, and build a business out of it because I thought people have to know about me to know what I can do, and so I went professional. Good, of course. Uh, how, how else are you going to get out there, for real? Totally, totally. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, is it uh, veronicadrake.net or .com? .com. Okay. All right, well, let's uh, bring in Eric. Uh, so I uh, hear you've been, you, you've met Eric already, and I'm going to apologize for any pranks or nastiness or pestering he does, but he's lovable. Hi, Mommy. Aww. <laughs> Aww. Um, the first experience I had with Eric, it was kind of like he walked up to me and he just kind of tapped me and he said, let's do this, I'm ready. And Aww. so he knew I was very nervous to do this, and he assures me that this has nothing to do with me. <laughs> said so um, he <laughs> he's, he's actually telling me that today's going to be filled with a lot of seriousness and a lot of twists and turns but a lot of fun because okay. that's the way it needs to be of course. and he is relating to the story that I told about wanting to take my own life and he was very adamant about talking about it in a way that's informative and powerful. And I'm looking at him over here and as I'm, uh, as I, he's kind of doing this, like he's ready to go and he's pushing me along. So Eric, where do you want to start? Yeah, he's, yep. he's, a, he's a mover and a shaker. Oh, he, he paces, he jiggles. He's just very, he's, he's all over the place. All he's over back the place. And, forth. and he wants to start by talking um, about life, and how he felt while he was here. And mm. he's telling me that life for him felt like he was always missing a shoe and always looking for the other shoe. Mm. So, oh. Eric, help, help us understand how someone might relate to that. He said that it's when you feel like your life is on track and then all of a sudden you go to move in a different direction with it and you see that you only have one shoe on your foot. You can't go somewhere without the other shoe on your foot. And that's a piece of something that's missing. And he said he felt like that quite often throughout his life, especially from um, uh, mid, mid teen years to his um, passing. And he said it was very frustrating mm. and he can, he, he can tell people this, that <laughs> he's telling me to take a breath. <laughs> he, feels, he feels my anxiety. Okay. Don't be nervous. It's just me. So, so yeah. <laughs> so 
what he's saying now that that he understands completely that he didn't understand when he was here is that missing shoe so to speak was missing pieces of his soul contract really? why he, why he came in and what were those pieces eric um he, there were things that he agreed to he's telling me that he would fulfill while he was here but why they didn't get fulfilled because it's like the right players didn't cross his path. It wasn't meant to be. So he's showing me that we all come in as a, as a holograph. Like there's, we all have various pieces to us and this person holds a piece and this person holds a piece. And he's saying me, they're not pieces, they're lessons. Ah, okay, okay. So our lessons are here and here, and everybody holds a piece, and he likens the pieces to something missing the shoe, m missing like the shoe. Okay. Well, what was the, what were was the person or persons that didn't come into your life, or at least <laughs> what were the lessons that didn't come into your life? Right. So Eric, what were the lessons that you can you can share with us that you feel didn't come into your life? He he's saying that he takes responsibility for the fact that maybe he didn't wait long enough. That's what he wants people to hear. So in other words, he's saying to me it's just a feeling. So if anybody's feeling this, you can breathe and hang on cuz the pieces will come. He assures me of that. So, Eric, help us understand, like, what what can we see as a piece? What, what Give us an example of your piece. Mm. One of the pieces were, for him was tolerance. He became um, intolerant with a lot of things. Um, he wasn't very patient. So a piece of his contract was patience and tolerance. And what he thought was that someone would hand deliver this to him, meaning it's got, somebody will find my shoe for me is what he's saying. And we, he realizes that even people in his life, like you or his fam, other family, you can only look so hard and so long for the shoe, it's his responsibility, A, to know where he put his shoe, and B, to, to go find his own shoe. And he's using the shoe reference, and he's showing me like a, a, a big sneaker kind of van type looking shoe thing. And oh yeah, he, he wore those, yeah, van, van shoes. Yeah, he's showing me the vans, and, and, and he's saying to me that he wants people to understand that depression um, he talked to me before this about John of the Cross, and I wasn't sure what the correlation was at, at our, at our pre-meeting here. And, and he's telling me now, John of the Cross was the author of Dark Night of the Soul. And so Eric experienced the Dark Night of the Soul on several levels. He calls that depression. Um, but when, when he, he was alive, said, right? When he was alive. Yes. Okay. Yeah, 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 absolutely. What he's telling us now is that the dark night of the soul, or as you use the word depression, comes because we have a misperception of why we're here. We think things should be one way, and in reality, they were set up to be this way. He could only know that now on the other side. It's like he said, Mom, I eat cotton candy and ice cream. It's, it's all good. It's all good here, <laughs> you know? Oh, yeah. Where he we're here, he just knows that it, it was a lot of disconnect for him. Mm -hmm. Disconnect. Well, was he supposed to take his life eventually, just later? Or um, was he supposed to grow old and die? You, you know what? It was part, he understands that it was part of his contract that he would have an early exit, as he calls it. Mm -hmm. He also knows perhaps not quite this early. Yeah. He Again, patience, tolerance, all of that. Um, he now can appreciate, and this is only because he's there, that he can appreciate the beauty of, say it, Eric, being different. Mm -hmm. 
the beauty of being different. Yeah, I was told by somebody else that he was supposed to really wait until he was like 27. So he'd be out of the house and take his life where we wouldn't find him. So. He was showing me 26. So yeah. thereabouts, absolutely. And, um, you know, he... He's a beautiful, beautiful soul, and, and he's got so much life in him. I mean, I know that sounds, you know, you're there, but he really does. He's yeah. just bombastic, like he's moving all over the place. Um, he also is telling me that John of the Cross, for lack of a better way to, to describe who he was, was Jesus. Oh, okay. Literally? Literally, the Christ energy came into John of the Cross. I see. I don't even know anything about John of the Cross. Is he a human being? Uh, John of the Cross, as he's telling me, was a, a, a priest. Oh, was he dead? A minister, something like that, who was in the 1500s. Oh, okay. And this John of the Cross um, actually bore his physical cross, like Jesus did, in this love and worship of a Carmelite nun, St. Teresa of Avila. Oh, okay. So he, he's showing me this, and it's very, John, he's got very worn fingers, and Eric said that he is, he knows that he should have bored, <laughs> he's saying, wait a minute, let me, let me say this right so I don't confuse people. <laughs> he's very chatty, very quick. Um, Yes. He knows that he should have had his cross held higher, but he was too proud to ask for help. Who was? Eric is saying he oh, was. Eric, too, he, oh, yeah. Yes, I'm sorry. He's saying, I was too proud to ask for help. What he admires about John of the Cross, what he's saying to me about him, is that he had the help of St. Teresa. Mm. He went to her. And so Eric blames no one he could have asked for help and he's saying that he wants people to know his message is one of information and wanting people to know that um everything everything ultimately is as it should be um he's very open to any kind of questions that i that I might want to ask him myself because he's new to me. And so, yeah. you know, he's kind of like, he doesn't know how to, to respond with me. And so maybe I should ask him a question to tell me about himself. Sure. That, but let me ask you one thing. Oh. You wanted to learn about, you, had this, you needed the, the lesson in tolerance and patience. Mm -hmm. uh, I think everybody does really. Was that so that you could have those as skills to become... Uh, a better spirit guy? You know, what he, what he, yeah, well, yes, but here's what he's saying. His, every soul comes in to learn something. Every soul comes in with its own, again, contract he's going back to. He's got a literal piece of paper in his hand he's showing me. And think of it like this, he, an Easter egg hunt. You've got your Easter basket and, you know, you're scurrying around the yard and you're looking for all these eggs to put in this basket. And what this is, is patience and tolerance is part of what you find to make up this contract. So ultimately, will it make you a better spirit guide? Yes, it could make you if you're chosen to be a spirit guide. Well, don't you choose that on your own? No, there's no, there's no uh, like, what do you call it, uh, um, job relocation company that... Or recruiter that okay we're gonna put you in this position it's not that yeah. right he's telling me that it's a feeling that you get so he's okay. saying feeling chooses you is to be ah. more clear with what he's saying because everything is a feeling yes. and even when we're here on earth everything is a feeling intuition is a feeling it's just a knowing it's a it's a, a gut feeling a hunch it's never really different there with him, okay. he's telling me. It's really, um, and I'm very fascinated by this because he's saying to me that it, he's not, he doesn't understand the whole picture of what would have happened had he stayed here on earth. So no one can understand that. He doesn't want 
anybody to try to articulate who he would have been at 40 because he said, don't let that happen. No one would know that. And um, he's also he's also got um, there's also a woman with him here today, a younger woman. Oh, is it uh, his girlfriend? Is there a name? Kelly. Does that mean anything? Kelly. Well, that's Lucas's friend, but she's alive. I'm not sure. He had a lot of friends. I think okay. one of them might have been Kelly. So he's got a woman here with him today, and she's kind of very quiet on the sidelines. She's not saying anything. She's a younger woman, um, and she has a lot of similarities to the way that her life was lost. Wait, is it uh, – so it's not Jillian, his girlfriend. Let's see. There's Jordan. There's Allie. They took they, – they got killed. I, I just uh, see the name, I see the name Kelly. Eric, okay. please clarify for me. Um, he's showing me a tree. Okay. So he's saying that was there someone that was lost in an accident with a tree? Could be. Yeah, because he's he's showing it's maybe this is just a friend he's brought along with him. Could be, or maybe but, it's a blog member's. Uh, daughter. There you go. Could so because he's showing me a red car, he's showing me a okay. tree. And he is very protective of this energy. He's very protective of it. And it's, oh, it's a new energy. Oh, it's a, it's somebody a new, who recently passed. It's, yeah, the hair on my arms. Eric, oh my God. And he's just, he's he's loving her. Yeah. He's loving her purely. Um, well, maybe this rings true to in, in any blog member out there that if you've lost a, a daughter, Kelly. Mm -hmm. She's very, she's very at peace. And, oh, Eric is like... <laughs> He's like the RA would be in college, you know, he's, uh -huh. got the, he's like showing, she's showing um, her around and he's taking her under his wing. And um, so he wants to, he wants to go back and talk about life purpose. Okay. Why, why we even come here. He said he didn't ever really know that um, until it was, Close to him leaving, he had a divine revelation, is what he's calling really? it. Really? Wow. He had a divine revelation, but it it wasn't what stop. It couldn't stop him. There there wasn't enough of it. Again, the missing shoe he's showing me, the missing piece. But he understands now, and he wants all of us to understand that. We look so deep, so far, so wide for purpose in our lives. And he's saying, you don't need to look any further for purpose than what you are and who you are naturally. Yeah. So he's saying. He said, life purpose is to be you, your, mm -hmm. your authentic self. He's saying embrace the naturalness of who you are. Mm. And he's also encouraging us to revisit who we were as children mm. before the filter became murky. Oh, yeah. Um, he said that he said around age nine for him, the filter He's showing me a camera lens, and, and it's got, like, fingerprints or smudges on it. And he just wasn't able to see quite as clear after age nine. Hmm. Well, did something happen then? He's showing me inside of his head his thoughts weren't working they weren't firing correctly so Something that's when the, the mental illness started to creep in so, yes so, yes he said age nine he had um um uh what's the word he's trying to think of the word he had um glimpses of himself like out of body experience is what he's saying, oh. but not the typical like when you die out of body experiences. He said he felt like he was watching himself, but he didn't really know what he was seeing at age nine, and he couldn't even say to you what he's seeing at age yeah. nine because he didn't know. Yeah. Um. Uh. He nothing happened extraordinary. He's saying nothing. You know, nothing happened happened extraordinary except that the lens began to get cloudy. 
um, it almost felt like around age 14, 15, he's telling me that I was on a roller coaster. Yeah, that's I exactly right. I couldn't get the brakes to work, he's saying. Well, let me ask you a real quick question. I just found out today that I have a genetic uh, defect, many defects, but uh, the, uh, in the, um, I have a mutation of the C667T gene. Which is involved in the methylation of you know, methylation process, and involved DNA and you know mm -hmm. folic acid and all that stuff. And sometimes that can cause uh, neuropsychiatric problems, etc. He's saying no. But he, he did not have that. Okay. He's saying no. All right. No, no. He's saying no. Well, did he, he just have bipolar disease, or was yes? Yeah. He's saying what he. Ha this is his words. <laughs> Very mainstream, what he had. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, so boring. Very mainstream. Nothing quite elaborate or as fancy as what you're saying. Very mainstream. And he's also saying to me that uh, um, he knew that it was a possibility or felt very strongly that it was a possibility for uh, uh, schizophrenic tendencies mm. for him. I mean, that, past, was, that was bounced to, around. Do you past think, age 20. Oh. That's why that he said to me, I, I couldn't risk it. Yeah. Do you, do you, was there something we could have done, some medicine or anything that would have uh, helped? Not that it matters now. <laughs> He's, he says they only know 10% of what they're supposed to know or what they're supposed what they could know about the brain. How are yeah. they helping? Yeah. You know, he said that, um, you know, he says it's kind of tongue in cheek, but the reality is, as he says, they really couldn't have. It's, they weren't that advanced with, with what he would have needed at that time. Listen, he's very adamant about me telling you this. He is right now owning the role of healer and teacher officially. He wants to be the mouthpiece, the voice for mental awareness. Good. This is really important to him. And you know what? I, I talked to you about wanting to dialogue with him and he brings a comfort to me who I grew up with a mentally ill mother. So he and I can, we talked about this prior to coming on here. And um, he's very forthcoming with me about mental illness. And um, he wants to be that mouthpiece. Now, do you, did you have any kind of endorphin deficiency? Like your brother, we found out he does, and he's responding to something called low-dose naltrexone. I mean, it's just a totally different person. No, no problems at all. Except for maybe some laziness. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, all he keeps saying to me is, I just know I misfired. I just know I okay. misfired. What does that mean something to you? He's because he's saying I misfired. Yeah, the yeah. neuro, the neural yeah. pathways. Okay. Yeah, he misfired, and um, to speculate, he can't. It really wouldn't help at this point. Yeah, that's and really good, of course, he's gone now. Yeah, but he doesn't. Um, you're not doing anything that wouldn't be helpful to to humanity by sharing the brother's story is what he's saying. Okay. So, so please, if, if the brother's comfortable, he's saying, feel free to share his story because that could really help a lot of people. So here he is up here, he's showing me all of the globalness of this disease and saying, if the brother's story can help and you can share what you just shared, go forward with it and bring it out because it may be too late for him but he's, he's saying there are a lot of other people that will benefit from hearing that. Yeah, there's some people who have depression that, uh, that are not responsive to the usual antidepressants, and they could have a deficiency in endorphin, which is mm -hmm. some people think mm -hmm. an autoimmune disease. Right. And what you do is you just take something called low-dose naltrexone, or LDN, to increase the, your own endorphin levels by 300% at night. So okay. that's all there is to it. You guys can just Google. He's saying that there's going to be so, so much um, revelation. And in, in, in the next 18 months, he's saying, we're in the field of mental health. There's going to be Good. major breakthroughs. Um, 
and he's saying that um, it's not going to be the standard uh, finder or developer of what's going to be revolutionary in the field. So we look, he, what does that mean, Eric? Uh, perhaps not a, it may be a lay person is what oh, he's saying. Oh, really? Well, what is it? It may be a lay person. Don't be holding. Uh, what is it? What is the big breakthrough? He's telling me that the lay person will be the guinea pig is what he's saying. So okay. really he's crediting the guinea pig with this because the person's putting themselves out there. Eric, can you give us, be more specific with what it is that, that might, uh, what this process might look like. He's saying it's a receptor type, um, a blockage to a receptor is what he's saying. Now, he understands that there's pills that do this, but this is not a pill form that this is going to be in the process, in the, in the mode of. It's not going to be pills. It's going to be, it's not quite invasive, but yet it is. So he's showing me something with the brain where they, oh, he's saying to me, just tell her they're going to actually touch a piece of the brain and they're going to stimulate it and that's going to make the difference. Oh, wow. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. So, so he's saying it's, it's much easier than it sounds. Okay. And actually he's telling me they're already doing that in some places. I don't know. He's telling me Sweden or uh, Sweden or Switzerland. I don't know. Somewhere with an S where they're already doing this process on clinically depressed people. Wow. Do you, uh, so do you, do they just stimulate once or do you have like a pacemaker where you, something's implanted and stimulates on a regular basis? Yes. He's saying to me, you can't do once and done. That's never going to solve it. That's like going to therapy one time and thinking yeah. you're fixed. Um, and he's saying that it's, it's a, it's a constant like that. So I'm assuming it's a, like a pacemaker effect. Um, Interesting. Is it in, so it's implanted into the brain. Yeah, he said okay. you can, you cannot remove it. We you cannot re we cannot remove this. This is okay. something that's done surgically, but he's given the credit to the guinea pigs as he calls them okay. with respect. Yes, Eric, I said with respect, <laughs> um, because without these courageous souls, this work would have no. It would not come to fruition. It would not be born. Um, okay. So he's he's um, giving all of that. Now, had he been here, this might be something that would have worked for him. And he's acknowledging that this is what I needed. But again, it didn't work out. No, so no, no, no. Well, free will, free choice. Yeah. Well, you're helping so many people on the side you're on. Oh, so Yeah, you know, absolutely. Um, so yeah, that's, that's where he's going with that. Um, life purpose. You know, he wants to go back to why he was here. Okay, he's telling me to tell everyone that no matter how long a soul lives, no matter how long, it serves its purpose. It has relevance. Even children that are born and live for an hour mm. serve their purpose. He's also talking about um, karma and what what it is that we come in to solve you know, for our souls. Um, interesting, here's what he's telling me about the soul. We carry pieces of the soul with us, but not the same soul. So, Eric, can you clarify for me how, how would that work? So, if, if, it, oh, if the soul is energy, mm -hmm. you can't kill energy, True. but pieces of it can mutate in his words or go into a different physical structure. Okay. So basically you can have this higher self, this, this over soul, whatever you call it. Yeah. And then pieces of you are like tendrils can go into different bodies at different times in the past and future and present. Is that mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yes, and, and he's telling me all for the purpose of learning lessons for the main soul. So, Eric, are we talking about we, 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 we all, yes, he, he's finishing it to me. So we have this main soul, these pieces go out, 
at the ultimate, after all the lessons are learned, all these pieces immerse back into this one main soul. So this is kind of like retrieving our contracts on a bigger level. Okay. Is what he's saying. Okay. Yeah. Very hmm. cool. That is cool. Yeah. So there, there's more than meets the <laughs> there's more than meets the eye. Mm -hmm. He feels very cerebral today. Very learned oh, is what wow. he's telling that me. Professor Eric. Yeah. yeah smoking yeah. Jas jacket. Your ass got in your pipe. Well, I, actually, uh, he's wearing a suit. Oh wow! <laughs> That's oh. He he's buried in in a suit. He he would wear what what he called when he was little papa suits because oh. his father always went to work in a suit and of course, and um, yeah he just uh, loved to sometimes just put a suit on and for nothing just walk around the house and he loved his suit. Yeah, and I can also smell pizza around him. I don't know if he loved that was... him some pizza because <laughs> I got the pizza smell and um, you know. Um, <laughs> he's uh, he's saying that he wants to tell me some cut up stories, but he doesn't know that they would be appropriate for the uh -oh. <laughs> for the video. He's telling me that he and I can bond over them later. Okay. Um, he's got some doozies, is what he's saying. But I'm I don't want to be that messenger. <laughs> oh come on, you can't. You got to share with the rest of the class, Eric. Come on, okay. just give us one. Just give us one. Okay. Um. Do you do you remember? Do you remember living, or do you live by a pond? He's showing me a body of water. Oh, we went. There's a duck pond that we always uh, took walks to. Mm -hmm. He he's showing me a body of water, and he's he was a prankster, and he sh <laughs> something disappeared mysteriously from one of his siblings, and he in a in a moment <laughs> um, put it in the pond. Hmm. So uh, interesting. I wonder what that was. Yeah, uh, he's did he was his brother old? Does he have an older brother? No, he's a younger brother. Okay, because he's showing me the brother. Now was all right. He's saying the brother was older than him, not chronologically, but the yeah, brother seemed older than him, and it was something of the brothers that he took. Okay, and that took a dive in the pond and he's showing me that it was something made of metal hmm. and to this day I can, probably, I can totally see him doing that yeah to this day probably no one knows what it is and um he doesn't want to stir the pot oh yes i do he said oh, yeah of course <laughs> Um, but he was very mischievous and could always yes. be counted on to never, people never knew what he was going to do next is what he was saying. Um, <laughs> he, oh, he would eavesdrop a lot too. If you oh, wanted okay. to know something, if you wanted to know something about his siblings, he said he, he could write the book. Oh gosh. Um, so he he was he's reassuring me that he was like the the media of the family. He could be the you know the no oh, yeah. uh, it would be a, probably a horror story. Mm -hmm. um, also, he's very um, very attached to a grandfather. There's a there's yeah, best, a male bestified yeah in Norway yeah uh, yeah. yeah. There, that's where the first, that's the first one he visited after he passed over. In in Norway, he spent uh, some time living with him. You know, not you know for several weeks anyway. Okay, okay, because he's very attached to him, like very. Um, he actually that's where he hangs out. He's telling me. Hmm, so I bet that's what he uh -huh. did when he first got out of his body. Is the first yep. refuge he took. It's where he hangs out. Um, he's and he's getting very learned by spending time and really paying attention to the grandfather. Okay. So it's a very big role the grandfather is still fulfilling for him. Sweet. Yeah. Very, very beautiful energy. Um, oh, oh, this is important, he says. Wake up. This is important. Okay, I'm awake. Uh, <laughs> you're not going to hell. <laughs> I never knew I wouldn't. There's no such thing as hell. We're not right. He's saying to me, hell, if you're ready, he said, this is going to be brilliant. 
So just back up. Drum roll, up. please. Hell is right here, right now, where we are. I don't know. And he's explaining to me that that all can get eradicated with the L word. Now, the love word. Yeah. Yeah. So hell is really the absence of love. Mm-hmm is what we're experiencing and he said if there's no he's telling me the big cheese he's calling him the big cheese the big kahuna um doesn't believe in religion there isn't there isn't religion there isn't there he's telling me call yourself catholic call yourself baptist call yourself buddha call yourself whatever you want what the hell are you doing Mm. What are your actions? Is what he's yeah. What are your actions? That's what are your important. actions. What the hell are you doing? Not what are you believing? What yeah. are you doing? Is what matters. Um, so he's very adamant about that. He calls him the big Kahuna, the big cheese. That's funny. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think he's done uh, that before. Yeah, it's very cool. Uh-huh. Um, he's very laid back, very chill. Um, Eric, what what else can what else would you like to share with us? Mm. He feels there's an, an electricity around you right now. Is that why my hair is getting all frizzy? Uh, yeah, he just feels the circuits are exploding around you. Are you okay? I'm good. Okay. Because he feels there's an electrical charge around you. And he's also telling you to hold on and to brace yourself because what you think you have right now is going to get 10 times bigger. Okay, is that good or bad? In a loving, positive oh, good. way. Okay, so I'll accept he's, that. He's saying that um, he's going like this, like with your mouth. Uh oh. <laughs> like you, you. I can talk. Talk, 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 talk. Oh, talk, yeah. Talk. Yep. Um, he's saying, don't be surprised if you go bigger with this mouth. Mm. And then he goes, he chuckles because bigger with the mouth. Uh, bigger platform, bigger venue. I don't, he's, and he's, oh, the electric current is transmission. Um, um, of, um, Eric TV. Oh, okay. Well, there's a producer that, uh, uh, Patricia Prepard, who wants to make an Eric show. Mm-hmm. Eric TV. He's saying it's there. He sees it. And he's done this. Are you ready? He's going, he's anointed you. He's hit you with the wand. Go for it. He approves. Um, you know, oh, hold out until you get it the way you know that we would want it to be. Well, I'll Don't, check with Eric. I'll always check with you, Eric. Oh, yeah. Don't bastardize the story. No. Don't let them bastardize the story no. is what he's saying. I'd rather because, not have one. Exactly. That's what he's saying. And it's too, this message is too important, not for this, he's going like this, for her mouth to get bigger and go wider. Mm -hmm. So um, Eric TV is, he's telling me to call it Eric TV. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) So anyway, that's, that's that. So does Patricia Papard sound like the person that is going to make it happen or will it be somebody else? Um, Patricia Papard. She's a very integral part. A piece, an integral piece of this process, he's saying, she may not be the end all be all, but she is, she, he's showing me she's the bridge. She's okay. the conduit. And ultimately, he's, he, he's not thinking that she, she, she won't be the ultimate decision maker, but she is the, the oh, he's showing me a needle and thread. She's, th- she's sewing all the pieces okay. together. So she may be the person that goes fishing for what could happen. Um, and then it could become that way. Um, but this is a regular, this is a regular gig. He's saying it's a regular gig and, um, yeah, he's, that's the electricity he sees around you. Is it reality TV or is it his, a a drama? (laughs) He's laughing. He's like, drama. He's okay. Like, Hell no. He goes, don't make it cheesy, mom. <laughs> oh, no. I, I wouldn't want to do that. All right. I just want to. So it'll be a, dr- a dramatic story of his li- life and afterlife yeah. or whatever? It would be a dramatic story of his life. And then he's saying that um, off of that piece of it will come all of these tales of inspiration and 
exploring why it happened um, and and can really give comfort in a big big way. He said, "Mom, it's not so. mom, it's not going to be uh, silver screen." He said, "But it's going to be big enough to transmit." Oh, you know, he's telling me something like Netflix or Hulu okay. may pick. Okay. So it could be something like that. Um, and he's saying, in a sense, you already have Eric TV because of YouTube, but, it, you know, it's bigger. Okay. It's bigger. Definitely sees bigger. And he's he's okay with the energy of Patricia. Okay. He's okay Good. with it. Yeah. So he said that you and he will talk about that privately, but um, okay. he's okay with her. All right. Now, uh, one person I want to ask before I forget, because that's where my mind is. I always forget. Um there have been a couple of uh, YouTubers, mediums. Mm -hmm. One, uh, I won't show her name, but she, I saw this video where she is healing Eric. And Eric uh, has a very dark side, and he's, you know, because of his suicide, and, you know, and almost like a demonic energy. And she had a recent one saying that he, she awoke with his, with a, a, a terrible smell from him and that cannot be angelic uh, energy because an, an, an angel would not give off a terrible smell things like that and, and another guy also said that Eric dishonored God's source by taking his life and he has this dark side what do you think oh. <laughs> do you really want me to say that <laughs> yeah go ahead go for it fuck them <laughs> yeah oh good I just think it's it's their human their human filters, but also their religious filters. This whole thing about suicide being taboo and all that. I can't but, believe he just like said to and he's saying to me, "You've got to say it." So I hope it's okay that I say. Oh yeah, my God, he can, I'm totally used to his cursing. He his said, F-bomb. first of all, first he's like, he's got his hands. He's going like this. Slow your roll. <laughs> Slow your roll. He said to them or to me. Yes, to them. Okay. What is the angel thing about, he's asking. What does he mean? Because he ain't no angel. Mm -mm. He never was, and he never will be. Right. So, and he means that in the most literal sense. He's like, Mom, come on. He's also very protective of you. Mm -hmm. So he does not want you to absorb that toxicity of those people. Delete, Mm -hmm. delete, delete, delete. (laughs) Okay. Um. Killing himself, what that does not make him go to hell. It does not make God love him less. He said that's bullshit. God doesn't work like that. And he's this very upsets him. This is his second major platform, okay? Mm. Not that he's an advocate or proponent. He says, don't get me wrong. It's not the way to go. Mm. However, And he's religion, made that clear. He's made that yeah, clear. Yeah, no. Religion. Religion is toxic. And if it, but if it brings you comfort and you want to say it to yourself and you want it, then go be somewhere, but do not bring it near me. He's saying, yeah, he's yeah. not a religion. He, did he do religion? No, no. Yeah. Cause he, he's not, Eric is, uh, this I, very upset him. I mean, I, mean, I was, really, uh, I was raised for a little bit Catholic and my uh, great uncle was Cardinal of Spain for the love of God. It's so funny that this happens. But, uh, but I was told by Eric that. From the spiritual perspective, from the perspective of the spirit side, suicide is just another way to die. Yeah, and there's the no... human side is quite different. It's taboo. It's upsetting, you know. Of course. Yeah. yeah. There's no. He said to. There's no law. There's no rule. There's 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 none of that. Mm-hmm. You know. And and he further goes on to tell me, if you want to get religious about it. And you want to talk about Jesus Christ and, you know, the son of God, he goes in the incarnation and all. He goes, every one of us that are born are the incarnation of the Christ energy because we all come from the same freaking father, he said. That's true. We're all all whole and part of God, like a hologram. Yeah, totally. What he said coming in in the beginning, we're a hologram. And we're all got our little egg basket, he said. And we're, yes, I'm showing her the little egg basket. Mm -hmm. And we're going around collecting our eggs. Mm -hmm. And he said it's just a belief that, that you can only affect change because you have, he's doing this, a human body. Yeah, yeah. That's a, that's just a belief. 
And it's not even something that's true because here he is with his billion people following him and he's affecting it. And so he's a teacher from there. And I yeah, happen to be yeah. a teacher from here. You're a teacher from here. That's it. Yeah. He said, yeah. end of story. That's it. Okay. So no dark side to you. No. He, well, his dark side was his personal hell. Yeah. That was, that's when he was alive. Totally. Big dark side. Yeah. That's what he's saying. If the dark side overtook me. We know, we know there were reasons for that, you know, up here he's showing me, but no, there's not dark. Now, now he wants to clarify that you must always have an opposite. Mm. So everything has an opposite. So if there is good or light, he's saying there must be dark. Mm -hmm. He said, but it's not something that it's something that must be dabbled in and practiced. It doesn't just take you over. And you cannot, you know, call it on yourself. If you constantly have dark thoughts, if you constantly do evil things, if you're, you're living in the dirt, mm. do you know what I mean, is what he's saying. So he's saying if, if I go out and I live in the dirt and I play in the dirt or the dark, I'm going to be the dirt. I'm going to be the yeah, dark. Yeah. And then, I yes, there are dark people. Yeah. yeah, but so are you saying that you t there's a dark side to you? I mean, you dabble in dark, Eric, or no? Okay. No, absolutely that's not. That's a human thing. Yeah, that's a human thing. Absolutely, Usually. it's a human thing. So he's, you know, he just wants to protect you and isolate you from that stuff. He's also saying that people who hurt other people are so wounded and so broken. And that people that make comments that are unfavorable, he's saying, <laughs> for lack of a thank you, um, are people that need our love. Oh, yeah. Send them love. Send mm -hmm. them love. This girl and who thinks she is healing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This girl yeah. thinks she's there to heal Eric. What is her MO? And the, the, the same one that said that he can't be. And he's she, doing this with what, his hands. Oh, it's just what's, she just wants money? Money. He's doing this. D does she okay. look down on Eric? Does she look down on you? She's riding Eric's coattails is what she's okay. doing. That's yeah. what he's showing me. Yeah. She's riding Eric's coattails. And here's the reality of this. There are going to be people that are going to buy her mom. Mm. They're going to buy her. Oh, yeah. Literally and figuratively, they're going to buy her. And then there are people that are going to be into what you're doing over here. And notice, Mom, I didn't say buy you because you're not about being bought. No, so. I don't. I don't take any money for anything I do. No, no. But the uh, dark, dark over here, um, that's the true dark. He says that's the true dark. Well, I mean, Eric, you could not possibly have a dark side and be doing all the good you're doing to save people, literally and figuratively. Yeah. He, he said to me, you see the world the way you are. Oh. You see the world the way you are. So you see the world through your own lenses. And when someone chooses to see the dark, I almost want to cry because oh. Oh. he's really adamant about this, mm. that it, he's not a dark person. He doesn't have dark energy mm -hmm. around him. And he wants people to know that have lost people to this way that they are good people yeah. who just made a choice. Yeah. Yeah. And that he is a loving, sweet, fine, happy soul. Oh, he is. I know. A mother knows his, her kid's energy. Mm. I found my sneaker. Oh, <laughs> you found your sneaker. Hopefully it smells better than the ones in your closet. <laughs> he, oh, what an amazing human being. Maybe I mean, something just, else. beautiful. Big energy, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Anything else you want to share? Um, uh, well, you, of course, uh, or uh, Eric, before we close? Um, he's tired. 
he he said he and I are going to we're going to talk. We have a lot in common and he's going to talk and he has so much more to share that he loves that you're doing this and he wants to talk about past lives at some point with you. Okay. Now he knows you've done some things. But we can always do more. Yeah, he's saying go, go deeper, go deeper with it, and I'd be happy to share what I know. Okay, he'll be the tour guide. He says. <laughs> okay, through the afterlife with gun and camera. Sounds yeah, good. There you go. Okay. All right, girl. Well, you guys, I will put on this YouTube her a uh, 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 you know uh, write down her website, how to get in touch with uh, her, and uh, I will call you right back. Thank you. Bye. 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 Love you, Eric. I love you, Mom. <laughs>